boys, boys, boys and girls. Just a quick one, different weathering techniques. And like I said to the guys, I've done two wagons now like I did it in the old days. And it's like an old friend coming to visit. I still prefer to this day normal paint brushes, acrylics and acrylic washes. It just does it for me. However, let's run through this quickly. And I can somehow show you the wagons. I'm nearly done. Um, this is the Kleine Constantia order. All right, now, this one. As you can see, this was done with an airbrush. So whatever fading you put in here um, is done very lightly with a misting of a lighter blue than the color you're working on. And then, obviously, washes and stuff here and there. But, and then uh, just to highlight all the rivets, you know, you come with a little panel line gap, panel line um, ink just to do that. And this is good and well and lovely and it has its place. Um, I don't want to say it's almost got a factory weathering look to it, but that's basically what they do when they do these things um, in large numbers. It's just tss, 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 and you're done. Now, to move from this one, uh, the one I did after this, well, the, the one I did just before this, let me just put this one side, is the following. Now, this is already better. It's, it's more fun to do, but this is all enamel washes. And what happens is if you do it, there's, there's little um, tricks that you can do. Like, for instance, yeah, you see there, you see the cracks there. I just put a dot of um, acrylic clear coat on there, and then I wash the enamel, let it dry for a day or whatever, and then just wash it with the enamel, then you get the cracks. Um, the rest of it is just chipping with a sponge, the white bits, and then the rust bits also with a sponge, and wada wada, the rest is all washed. Different um, pin wash to the all the rivets and yeah this is this is fun to do it takes a little bit longer but more about that I'll get to that just now um, yeah I can live with this um, my stuff will be way more weathered than this one day but I want to give Yaku like sort of one of each all right so yeah this is all enamel washes, mixed stuff, and um, acrylic uh, chipping, wara, wara, wara. All right. Okay, good. So let's get this out the way. All right, now, what this video is about and what I want to show you is the following. Now this. This is my kind of weathering. When I did this one, let me tell you a story. Back in the day, I used to be scared of an airbrush. Couldn't handle the thing. Um, mainly because I didn't know how the hell it worked. I couldn't airbrush. It looked to me hell of a... Um, you know, there was a lot of stuff to remember and a lot of... How to mix the paint and then how to clean the brush. And it was this and that. So I actually never... Up until about three years ago, I actually never touched an airbrush. Before that... I used to wear this stuff for guys overseas, and they were all very happy, and I used to do it like this. Now, this is everything acrylic. The base coat's acrylic. Um, the, you know, the primer is acrylic. The base coat's acrylic. And then from there on, the washes, everything is acrylic. And what you do is you have a spray bottle with water, and you just go, ch -ch 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 -ch, you wet this whole thing. And you just apply all your washes to get the dark dirt. You let that dry for a day. And this, the fading here, to my eye, is better than anything you can do with an airbrush. Uh, that's dry brushing. So you mix your base color with a little bit of white until you're happy that you have enough fade. 
And there's a hell of a lot of control with that because you can put more white in if you want it, more faded, or you can do it slightly, very, very slightly, um, and that will give you this sort of effect. Now, I love the acrylic washes. Mainly for the, the main reason why I love acrylic washes above oil washes is it dries quicker. So I can't sit here and wait two days for one layer to dry before I can do the next layer. But still, be that as it may, to weather a, a wagon like this takes a day. It just yes, there's nothing you can do about it. And again, the, the pin washes on all the rivets is a black this time. So you can play around with what you want. Um, I wanted this one to look like well used, but not pulled through the arse at all. You know, um, yeah, most of them looked like this. So, all right, so that's the one. Then, and now, as I said to Carl last night, the Oaks, the purest amongst you, should now go and have a Rennie, because you're going to have hard burn. Um, the way I like to do stuff. The way my whole railroad's going to look like. I love weathering. When I started with this, I always, I had a very good oak in Germany that taught me a lot of stuff. And he had a thing, old Helmut at the weathering factory, he had a thing and he said to me, you must decide before you start weathering if you want to weather or if you want to play. If you weather, you weather. Don't stuff around. There's no such thing as light weathering. It's like love. You can't just love your wife a little bit. You either love her flat out or you don't. There's nothing in between. Which which is hectic, but makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I, I weathered a lot of stuff, especially in HO, with that in mind. So now this. Okay, before I take this away. Heavy weathering, and the way I like to do it, and the difference between this and the other one that I did with the airbrush, and even the enamel washed one, is when you do stuff with a brush, by coming closer, you get it. You see there, there's a texture to it. The if I pull my hand over here, I can hear that. I can feel the dirt. And that to me is just how it should be, because dirt has got a texture. Now, the very difficult one to do is old rust. And I have a way that I do it with pigments. And this is the next step now, is pigments. Let me show you this. All right, have you, have you had a Rennie? <laughs> now, this to me is weathering. Um, let me show you that. The air pipes. Are, okay, this is still wet, hey? This is still wet. Let me show you on the air. This one, this side is dry. This I did last night before the power went. All right, so it, it still blends in. Now, to me, this is weathering. My whole layout, everything that I'm going to do there, all the factories and stuff will look like this. I can tell you one thing. If I, we should actually do that. Okay, because if I look at it through the camera, yeah, that's better. That's more the color. If I look at it through the camera with a light on it, it's much lighter than it really is. But let's, okay, let's bring it back so you can see textures. Now, textures, textured weathering is a bit of a problem because you've got to work with pigments. And the main thing is to get that pigment to stay on there. Now, in the old days, when we used to do this, we used to go out in the garden, get some sand, chase it through your ex-wife, that's why she's the ex-wife, through a coffee grinder, and then have a fine sand, and you used to use that um, for texture, and then weather on top of that. Now, um, I remember back in the day, we used to take Cobra floor polish, and then add about 30% water to it, and a little bit of sunlight liquid, just to break the surface tension, for a fixer. But nowadays it's much easier. I mean, this is all green stuff world. Um, their pigments, the pigment fixer. I mean, this is rock art. This is like, this is like, um, it, 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 it's a crust almost. So it won't come off even if you handle it. You know, that's very, very nice. But to me, that's weathering. I mean, this wagon looks like it has worked all its life. 
and um, textures. That's where the magic lies, textures. However, this is the thing I want to come back to. To weather a wagon like this, it, this is now day two. Takes you two days um, because you've got to wait for stuff to dry and then do stuff on top of that and then another layer, wait for that to dry and then another layer and another layer and it carries on and on and on and on. So, you know, it's very, very, it's a very intense weathering job. I cannot do this commercially. Um, Yaku is my buddy, so this one, you know, you got to charge for a job like this. It takes you basically two days. Now, um, I don't know what you guys think. Tell me in the comments. Uh, I've done a couple of them back in the day. I want to do a GZ cattle wagon, like I did it a lot less rust than this, but, you know, very um, sort of concentrated rust on certain points. And then chase it again with the with the pigments because I love the the textures. Now, yes. So there we basically have it. This is it. I'm all but done. And then we have. I showed you the grey one. So there's Yaku's four wagon standing. I showed you, and the grey one over there is the clean one. This is no weathering on it. Nothing whatsoever. That's nice and clean so i think he's got quite a nice variation um in his rolling stock what i'm going to do later uh i'm going to work the weekend inside there i'll put all of them down and you can see what they look like inside my layout room there um all together and now the last thing i gotta build one more the last one of the ay's for another customer, which I promised him you'll have by Thursday. Look at that. Look at that. i got to get that now to that. <laughs> oh, it's going to take a little bit of time. But okay, anyway, just, that's just, just quick banter. Just to show you the different kinds of weathering and how I like to do it. So tell me in the comments what is your favorite. All right, dudes, I'm going to carry on. We speak later. Good talk scenes.